Today we'll embark on a journey into the intriguing realm of the left hand path, a term often surrounded by mystery, intrigue and sometimes misconceptions. Our primary goal in this episode is to explore, understand and appreciate the rich landscape of traditions, practices and philosophies under the left hand path umbrella. To set the stage, it's crucial to establish what we mean by the left hand path and how it contrasts with its counterpart, the right hand path. Both terms find their roots in Eastern spirituality, specifically in the dichotomy found within tantric practices. In its simplest form, the right hand path can be seen as the path of conventional religious practices, societal norms, and communal orientation. In many ways, it is the path of acceptance and union with cosmic principles and divinities. On the other hand, the left hand path is characterized by its challenge to conventional religious and moral structures. It is the path of the individual, emphasizing personal experience, self deification, and often antinomian practices that directly oppose societal norms. The left hand path is not a mere inversion of the right-hand path, but is, in essence, a path of self-empowerment and realization through methods that might seem unconventional to many. However, addressing some of the biases associated with the left-hand path is vital. Throughout history, especially in the West, there have been misconceptions to equate left-hand path practices with evil or darkness. These misconceptions often arise from misunderstandings and cultural biases rather than genuine philosophical or ethical distinction. While some left and path traditions embrace symbols and archetypes deemed dark by mainstream standards, these misconceptions often arise from misunderstandings and cultural biases rather than genuine philosophical or ethical distinctions. While some left and path traditions embrace symbols and archetypes deemed dark by mainstream standards, it is more about recognizing and integrating all aspects of existence, both shadow and light, rather than promoting malevolence. In this episode, we'll dive deeper into the origins, principles, and various traditions that define the left hand path, seeking a nuanced understanding of this multifaceted spiritual approach. By the end, I hope you leave with a broader perspective and a deeper appreciation for the complexities and intricacies of the left hand path. With that, let's journey together into the historical origins of the left hand path and its foundational principles. Before we dive in, allow me to announce the launch of my podcast that you will find on your favorite podcast platform and my newsletter. Check it out and sign up for the newsletter. Don't rely on the capricious algorithm and social media platforms that could shut down whenever they decide. By signing up for my newsletter, you will always be up to date with my work and you will get access to exclusive content, insights and academic research. You find the link in the info box and a pinned comment. You will also find all the ways to support Angela Symposium as this project is brought to you by you. And thank you to the generous souls who make this knowledge available to all. Now, let the symposium begin. Hello, symposiast. I'm Dr. Angela Puca, Religious Studies PhD, and this is your online resource for the academic study of magic, esotericism, paganism, shamanism, and all things occult. As some of you guys may know, I have another video on the principles of the left hand path from a few years ago. I've decided to make another video on the topic explaining more on the principles, history, traditions, and ritual practices of the left hand path, aided by primary sources alongside the secondary ones used for the past video and videos on the left hand path traditions. All my sources are, as always, found in the info box. Historical origins. The roots of the left hand path 
are ancient and diverse, stretching back millennia and spanning multiple cultures. We need to delve into the historical context to fully grasp the depth and complexity of left and path traditions. So let's start with Vamachara in Hindu Tantra. The earliest conceptual division between what we now understand as the left and right hand paths can be traced back to ancient Hindu tantric practices. The term Vamachara, often translated as left-handed, left-handed attainment, refers to certain practices that defy orthodox Hindu traditions. Vamachara rituals might involve acts that are considered taboo in conventional religious contexts, such as consuming forbidden substances or engaging in ritualized sexual practices. These acts are not pursued for mere hedonistic pleasure. They are symbolic gestures that challenge societal norms with the goal of transcending them. It is crucial to note that while Vamachara was unconventional, it was not evil in the sense that many Western interpretations might suggest. These practices were methods to reach spiritual realization by directly confronting and mastering one's desires and fears. The adaptation and evolution of the left and path concept within the Western esoteric framework has been marked by significant shifts and diverse interpretations. At its core, the left hand path's origins trace back to Eastern religious traditions, especially the tantric practices of Hinduism and Buddhism, as we have just mentioned. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, a pioneering figure and co-founder of the Theosophical Society, was instrumental in transplanting these concepts into Western thought. However, her portrayal of the left and path was tinged with associations of black magic and malign practices, a stark departure from its eastern roots. The early 20th century marked a period of refinement of these concepts within the Western esoteric milieu. Organizations like the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn played a role in molding and shaping the left and path and its counterpart the right hand path. A key figure in this era, you guess it, is Aleister Crowley, who imbibed aspects typically linked with the left hand path, such as defiance against societal norms and a keen focus on individual spiritual elevation. Yet it's not worthy that Crowley refrained from overtly labeling his practices as left hand path. The left hand path has, over the years, evolved beyond just a spiritual or magical journey, morphing into a robust medium of cultural and social dissent. This transformative trajectory has seen its symbols and philosophies deeply resonate with an array of creative minds, from artists to musicians to writers, all of whom have harnessed its essence to question societal conventions and champion the spirit of individualism. Such a vibrant confluence of ideologies resulted in the left and path undergoing a syncretic evolution, wherein various traditions and practices seamlessly fused to birth novel expressions and interpretations of the path. At its heart, the historical evolution of the left and path underscores humanity's timeless endeavor for self-realization, autonomy, and an unwavering spirit to question the established. We will now focus on a deeper exploration of the left hand path's foundational principles, offering insights into both its age-old and contemporary traditions. Though diverse in its traditions and practices, the left hand path revolves around a set of foundational principles. These principles differentiate it from other spiritual paths and unite its varied traditions under a common umbrella. The first principle is individualism versus collectivism. At its heart, the left hand path is about the individual's journey. 
Unlike many spiritual paths that emphasize the collective or the dissolution of the self into the greater whole, the left-hand path stresses personal empowerment, autonomy, and self-realization. This isn't a mere rejection of communal values. It's a profound understanding that spiritual realization is deeply personal and cannot be dictated by external dogmas. The second principle is self-deification and the pursuit of godhood. One of the most defining aspects of the left-hand path is the idea of self-deification. This means recognizing the divine within oneself and striving to realize and manifest that divinity in one's life. For practitioners of the left hand path, the journey is not really about submitting to a higher power, but recognizing and awakening to the God within. The third principle is challenging societal norms and moral conventions, also known as antinomianism. Left and path practices often challenge established moral and societal conventions. This isn't for the sake of rebellion alone, but serves a profound purpose. By confronting and sometimes breaking taboos, practitioners aim to overcome conditioned fears, biases, and limitations. This antinomian stance helps adherents see beyond dualities, transcending notions of good and evil, and recognizing the subjective nature of morality. The fourth is emphasis on personal experience and direct knowledge, because Unlike many traditions that emphasize faith or acceptance of external doctrines, the left hand path stresses gnosis or direct personal experience. Knowledge is not something to be accepted passively, but something to be actively sought and experienced. This might involve meditation, ritual or other esoteric practices that provide direct insights into the nature of existence. Then we have embracing the shadow. The left hand path often involves confronting one's shadow self, the aspects of oneself that are repressed, denied or deemed dark. Rather than rejecting or fearing these aspects, left hand path practices often incorporate them recognizing their transformative potential. This understanding is deeply rooted in the idea that enlightenment or realization isn't about negating or escaping from the dark aspects of existence, but integrating and transcending them. Having laid the groundwork for understanding the principles that underpin the left hand path, we will next delve into the traditions that have arisen from these principles. From the enigmatic practices of modern Satanism to the esoteric rituals of Sessionism, the left hand path is a mosaic of varied yet interconnected traditions. Let's embark on this exploration. As with many spiritual paths, the principles of the left hand path have given rise to myriad traditions, each offering unique interpretations, rituals and philosophies. While all resonate with core left hand path tenets, their symbols, myths and practices differ. Let's explore some of the most prominent. The first one is Satanism. Originating in the context of Christian traditions, Satan or the adversary initially served as an antagonist figure. Over time, however, some groups and individuals began venerating Satan, not as a symbol of evil, but as an embodiment of individualism, defiance against arbitrary authority and enlightenment. Among the modern Satanist traditions, we find the Laveian Satanism, which was founded by Anton Lavey in 1966. 
with the Church of Satan. This atheistic form of Satanism views Satan not as a literal deity, but as a symbol of human nature, freedom and individualism. It emphasizes indulgence, self-deification and personal responsibility. Then we also have theistic Satanism, which unlike Laveyan Satanism, theistic Satanists view Satan as a real entity or force deserving of reverence or worship. The practices and beliefs within theistic Satanism can vary widely, ranging from traditional demonolatry to modern syncretic traditions. Then we have Satanism, founded by Michael A. Aquino and other members who left the Church of Satan. The Temple of Sat was established in 1975. While it draws inspiration from Laveyan Satanism, it diverges significantly in its teachings and practices. Central to Satan philosophy is the worship of Set an ancient Egyptian deity associated with chaos, darkness, and individualism. For Satians, the path involves self-deification and pursuing one's unique purpose or kseper, a term derived from the ancient Egyptian meaning to come into being. Then we have Luciferianism. While often conflated with Satanism, Luciferianism is a distinct tradition. At its core, Luciferians revere Lucifer not as the devil, but as a symbol of enlightenment, knowledge, and personal growth. Some Luciferians approach the path atheistically, viewing Lucifer as a symbol, while others adopt a theistic stance, regarding him as a deity or a force. We then have the Typhonian tradition, which was founded by Kenneth Grant in the 20th century and can be seen as an offshoot of Alastair Crowley's Thelema. It incorporates themes from Lovecraftian horror, voodoo, and Eastern mysticism. This tradition emphasizes personal hypnosis, often achieved through intense and unconventional magical practices. It explores the realms beyond the conventional tree of life in Kabbalistic tradition, delving into the so-called tunnels of Seth, or the Clifford. In the realm of other traditions within the left hand path, there's indeed Clifothic magic, which delves into working with the Clifford, the shadow side of the Kabbalistic tree of life. This path explores themes of chaos, the void, and the darker facets of consciousness. Another notable tradition is Dragon Rouge, a contemporary left and path magical order. It intricately weaves Nordic mythology, dragon symbolism, and elements of cliffotic magic into its practices. So, in summary, while these traditions are distinct, with their own symbols, practices, and teachings, they all resonate with the core left and path principles of individualism, self deification, and the challenge to conventional moral and spiritual norms. Now, let's talk about rituals, practices, and ethics in the left hand path. While underpinned by a shared set of principles, the left hand path manifests in a diverse range of rituals, practices, and ethical frameworks across its various traditions. Let's delve into these practices to provide a fuller picture of the left hand path experience. Rituals in the left hand path can range from complex ceremonial magic to symbol symbolic gestures. Their purpose often revolves around altering consciousness, invoking specific energies or entities, and creating transformation within the practitioner. In Laveyan Satanism, rituals, often called psychodramas, are designed to release emotional tension and manifest one's will. They might involve tools like chalices, swords, gongs, invocations, declarations, and even theatrical performances. In traditions like Satanism and Luciferianism, rituals might be used to commune with the respective deities. Sat or Lucifer, seeking guidance, empowerment, and or insights. Among the practices, we find meditation and visualization. Essential to most left and path traditions, these practices help practitioners focus their minds, explore the inner words, and connect with deities or archetypes. Then we have magical workings. 
This could involve spell work, sigil magic, invocations or evocations, aiming at manifesting specific outcomes or connecting with external forces or entities. Then we find shadow work, a psycho-spiritual approach when one confronts and integrates repressed aspects of the self. This is pivotal for many of the left and path practitioners, as it aligns with the path's ethos of self-realization and self-integration. Then we have study and scholarship. Many left and path practitioners dedicate significant time to studying esoteric texts, mythologies, and philosophies, enriching their understanding and practice. Contrary to popular misconceptions, the left hand path does possess ethical considerations. These tend to be more individualistic, steering clear of universal moral prescriptions. Within many left hand path traditions, there's a strong emphasis on personal responsibility, underscoring the belief that practitioners are entirely accountable for their actions and their resulting consequences. This perspective contrasts numerous religious frameworks that often hinge on moral directives from a higher power. Despite the left hand path's inclination towards challenging societal norms, there's a concurrent stress on the importance of respecting individual boundaries and freedoms. Central to left hand path ethics is the aspiration for mastery, instead of merely going with the flow or yielding to a higher will. Indeed, adherents often focus on mastering their environment, circumstances, and to some extent their destiny. In essence, in its myriad traditions, the left hand path offers a vast array of rituals and practices aimed at personal transformation, empowerment, and enlightenment. While distinct from many mainstream spiritual paths, its ethical framework promotes personal responsibility, mastery, and respect for individual agency. As we conclude our exploration, it's crucial to recognize the left hand path not merely as a set of beliefs or practices, but as a living, evolving tradition. It speaks to the timeless human desire for autonomy, knowledge, and transcendence, challenging us to question, explore, and ultimately realize our true potential. This is it for today's video. If you watched until this point, leave me a vampire emoji. Now, my dear symposiast, this project of delivering free academic knowledge based on peer-reviewed scholarship can only exist thanks to your support. So if you have the means and want to offer this knowledge to everybody, please consider supporting my work with a one-off PayPal donation by joining membership, my inner symposium on Patreon, super thanking me in the comments or buying my merch. All links are in a pinned comment and in the info box. Also, don't forget to sign up for my newsletter to get to know me better through my personal reflections and ponderings over my academic work on all things esoteric. If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to be notified of any new release. And leave me a comment letting me know your thoughts on this episode. Thank you all so much for being here and stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now.